Go big game hunting in Africa, and you might get a professional hunter and a tracker. As a guest at the Northern Cape Professional Hunting School, Ollie Williams gets six PHs. I think the plan for today is a uh, big kudu ball or a nice, a nice water buck ball, depending on what the guys, what, what we bump into. Hey guys, I mean, you, you, you've got a plan. We're gonna we head up. Is that head up the mountain? Yes, the plan. What we're going to do, Ollie, is we're going to start here at boat launch because the kudus and water buck bulls are going to be in the cliffs, and then we're going to work away at the side of the cliffs all the way to the top of the mountain and then back go back down again. So basically, I think we're find we'll, see, we'll see them by then. Yeah. Cool. And then are we, we're quite a big group. Is that is that going to be, are we going to stalk in no, with no, this many people? No, no, what we're going to do if we identify the animal, half of the group's going to stay back and then three guys will, will stalk them. Make the final stalk. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. The trainee PHs, all of them school leavers, take turns to guide. Richard is up first and his first spot is this kudu bull. He's, he's old. Yeah, but... He's not, he's, not very, he's not very big, he's quite wide, but you know, he can probably do better. Into and that's what we're after this morning, we're after a big, a big trophy ball, so we're going we're gonna to leave that one. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that Ollie, he's a trophy hunter. And he is. And he's also a meat hunter and a management hunter. The animal he shoots is going to make way for another animal to take its place in the herd. It's going to end up in local supermarkets and its horns are going to hang on the wall at Ollie's home in the UK. Despite the efforts of comedians and politicians to make the horns on an antelope's head something shameful, you can be all of those things at the same time. Horns are a good way not only to judge an animal, but to price an animal. Those prices pay for wildlife conservation, a fact that some comedians and politicians unfortunately refuse to accept. The students at the school learn how to judge and to price animals at hundreds of metres. Richard, what does a good kid of all look like? Okay, so to, we, we always want to hunt mature kudu bulls that's past their prime. Yeah. So what there's two things we look at. We look at the thick secondary growth on the base of the horns yeah. and the tip of the horns to become white and look looking for it because then they've completed their curls. Yeah. And then we know it's a mature bull. So and they won't they won't curl more than that. No, no. no. Then they'll be finished growing, yeah. Brilliant, so that's what we're and then yeah. width and stuff like that. Yeah, width it's depending on the genes of the yeah. kudu bull, but if it's pointing forward then you know it's an old bull, it's mature bull. Richard guides Ollie onto another kudu. This one is better, and Ollie has a chance on it. We spotted a nice mature bull, and then we decided to make a stalk on. We came up over the ridge, and then obviously just slightly moved. Well, there's another group that we didn't quite see, so we bumped them, and then they bumped all the way down the valley and, and cleared out. And he did actually stand broadside, but it was about 300 metres. So. Next stop is the top of a small hill. It gives Ollie and the gang a vast view of southern Africa. I reckon I can see probably 10,000 acres of ground from this one spot. Um, it's just a huge, huge country. We've been glassing for a couple of minutes. Um, it's a big area we're glassing over and we've just spotted a water bucket about probably a thousand yards. That's the first game to consider. There's more. Just let, let, tell me what we spotted here. Um, we spotted some kudu cows and then two bulls. Um, we don't know if they're big enough to shoot yeah. they're too young yet but you know i think it's smart to check it out eventually so we've got we've got a bit of a dilemma here what are we, what are we looking at at the moment we have a water bowl over here and then kudu over here but they're both too far to really work out yeah. so, so now we're going to ignore both it. and go yeah. a different way completely <laughs> yeah. that's hunting for you <laughs> kudu are a tricky animal um Hard to hunt. They're the, called the gray ghosts of Africa. So, you know, you see one and then it's gone. But judging a kudu, you want an old bull and preferred you want deep curls and ivory on the top. So, I mean, you just look for that when you go hunting. The kudu like the mountains and they can obviously get up there a lot easier than we can. It's being able to stalk them from below and find your way up the mountain really helps, especially in this terrain. The plan is walk down the valley at the bottom of the hill, which reveals yet more game. Yeah. We've just seen another group of kudu. Um, Respotted two balls. This one we're looking at is, is a bit small, and he's looking at us. So if we were going to make a stalk, it'd be a hard stalk up the mountain. Um, and we're not even sure if the other balls necessarily a shooter. Plus they've seen us. So instead we're going to continue with our plan and go down through the valley. Ah, 
continue with the plan. How often has British foreign policy founded on the rocks and shoals of the safe option? Two of our PHs went off scouting and returned with bad news. Radio don't work. Huh? Radio won't work. Yeah. Um, they do that I saw in the news right up this way. And then I think you guys put a bachelor of water, uh, water bottles because they came running over the mountain yeah. down towards us. Um, we f***ed it basically. The radio f***ed it. Well, the radios, uh, as always, didn't work. So these guys were communicating with us that they were seeing, they were seeing game running over the top. Um, and we didn't get the message. It's time to swap PHs. Next up is Reese, who has come to the school from Texas. No more marching in plain sight for Reese. She leads us into a swamp. I'm getting your shoes wet, it's not bad. Do you want mine? I don't mind. It's worth getting our feet wet. On the other side of the swamp is a group of kudu. Yeah, they're all looking at us. Cows on the right also looking at us. Reese guides Ollie up a small bank and Cresting it, he's less than 50 metres from the bull animal he came for. Reese brought us into an incredibly close range um, and we had the cows and the bulls in front of us at about 50 yards, some were even closer up to 30 yards and we, the bull was just behind a, a, a hedge and as soon as he got out of the hedge Reese got the sticks up and I shot him, shot felt pretty good. Um, he reacted hope, kicking and bucking the way you'd like. Um, and I think he's just dropped down in here. But yeah, the shot felt good. I think he's down here. It is indeed. No more than 50 metres from where Ollie shot it. Great job, Reese. <laughs> what a stalk. What a cool stalk that was. <coughs> well done, Ollie. Yeah, thanks, man. Well That's a beautiful Yeah. Thing. So we saw them up on the mountain, and we knew there was a herd, but we didn't know... Um, how many there were. We see the big bull, a bull that is was old, its horns were good. We checked it out and then we decided we should go for it. You know, the sun, sun was almost down, so time was of the essence. So we just decided that we would walk through the riverbed and then stalk them up the mountain. We had to be very quiet and had to make sure that, you know, we could get up there in time with the light. And so we stalked up the mountain and then once we got to the top, we peeked over about 30 meters out. They were, they were up there. The bull was behind a bush, but he came out right in time. Um, so speechless is the word, I really am. Speechless. These are, it was just exactly the bull we're looking for, old, mature, curls facing forwards. Can I help? I'm just talking right now. If you are leaving school and thinking of something to do, you can learn to be a professional hunter too. It's a seven month course. It costs 14,000 US dollars if you're from outside South Africa. And at the end of it, you'll be qualified to join the 65,000 people in South Africa alone who work in wildlife management. Or whatever you do with your life, you'll know how to deal with large African animals. Visit ncph.co.za. I particularly enjoyed the um, walk, walk, through the, walk through the river. You were like, do we go through here? And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs>